Woohoo! All right, in that last video, we went through non right triangle, a lot of cosines, a lot of sines. That's one way to do it. Some of you don't like it. You don't like it. Now, maybe you'll like this a little bit better. If you're okay with right triangles, and you, you gotta be, you gotta be good. If you're not good with right triangles, I'll go on it, you gotta be. And this, is, this video will actually help you a little bit with right triangles. Again, more practice. This method is using right triangles only. I drew the same problem. 100. 30 degrees north of west, turn 40, 20 degrees south of west. Well, how are we going to use right triangles? You proved mathematically using geometry skill that this is not 90 degrees. So, how come you're saying we're using right triangles? Okay, good, good, good question. Good question. Good question, Billy. Good old angsty Billy again. I left, purposely left the answer for the problem from the last video. <clears throat> it's right here as we solved it and as I wrote it down, so we'll leave that there. Okay, we know we need to get that answer. How can we do it? Okay, some of you like right triangles. Here's what we're gonna do. Any vector, any vector, any vector can be broken down into a right triangle with the component parts at 90 degrees. What are you talking about? Let's say, that you get into a boat and you sail directly southeast, directly southeast. That means you're sailing at 45 degrees here, 45 degrees there. Are you moving south when you're doing this? Mm-hmm. Are you moving east when you're doing it? Mm-hmm. So you're moving in two directions at once, aren't you? Exactly. You are moving south and you are moving east at the same time. So we could break this vector down southeast into a, an east and a south component that make a right triangle. Boom. We now have east and we now have south. And we're going to do that. You could either get from here to there by doing this as the crow flies at your displacement. Or you could go, I'm gonna go east for this amount of time, and then I'm gonna turn south and go here. And you could do that too. You end up in the same spot. So, this is called breaking down a vector into its components and making a right triangle out of it. We're gonna do the same thing with these two. Some of you are gonna see this already. Okay, let's see when you catch on. When are you going to catch on and go, oh, oh, oh. Okay, maybe it's now, maybe not, maybe not. Break these two vectors down into right triangles. You start from here, you go to here. That means you've gone north and you've gone west at the same time. This is north, this is west. That's right triangle. Oh, what you need to do now is solve for the two component sides. Do the math and get those answers for those two sides. What are they? A little geometry, a little geometry skill here now. If this is 30, okay, that's right triangles, that's 60. All right. So use right triangle, you have an angle, and you have a side. You're good. If you have an angle on the side and a right triangle, you can solve for anything. Anything? Anything. So let's go ahead and solve for how far north I've traveled. And then we're going to figure out how far west I've traveled. How far north have I traveled? Um, that's the adjacent side to this angle, and that's how you find this. What is that? What is that? Remember sine, cosine, tangent function. We can use those because we have a right triangle we construct in. So that would be cosine. Cosine is equal to the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. So cosine of 60. <laughs> so I'm going to get rid of the little marker. I'm still using it. It's squeaking even more. Cosine of 60 is equal to the adjacent side north over 100. That's my hypotenuse. So how do we get north? Multiply. Multiply the cosine of 60 times 100. Boom. That'll do it. Cosine of 60, we all know, is uh, 0 0.5. 0 0.5 times 100 is 50. 50. That means this side is 50 kilometers. You have traveled 50 kilometers north. All right, now let's do the same thing for west. How far west did you go as you went from here to there? 
This is the opposite my 60. So I'm going to use sine. Sine is the opposite over a hypotenuse. So the sine of 60 equals the opposite, which is west, over the hypotenuse of 100. Sine of 60 is 0.866 times 100 is 86.6. So we have gone west. 86.6 newtons, uh, kilometers, newtons. I saw that N and I thought Newton. You'll get it. Newtons are coming up. Okay. Forces. All right, now, I'm going to do the same thing with this triangle over here. Break it down into two components. You have, when you go in this direction here, you're moving to the west, and you're moving a little bit to the south. That's a right angle. So go ahead and figure out this side and this side, the same way we just did it. Um, we have a different angle, so be careful. It's not 60, it's 20. But this is my, this west over here is my adjacent side. So I'm going to use cosine, just like I did here. Cosine of 20 equals, cosine of 20 equals the adjacent side, which is the west side. All right, west. And my hypotenuse or my hypotenuse is 40. Cosine of 20, I don't have. I have some functions memorized, but not, not 20 degrees. So the cosine of 20 times 40, I'm multiplying these to get west. Yep. It would help if I turn the uh, calculator on. So for redo, cosine of 20 times 40, 37.6. 37.6. Well, I have traveled from this point down to the Joe's Diner. Remember, that's Joe's Diner. I have traveled to the west an additional 37.6 kilometers. All right, that side done. Let's figure out this side. That's going to be the sine. The opposite of 20. The sine of 20 equals the opposite, which is actually south. Remember over here, when I was... Uh, doing this this side here, uh, this side is north. I figured out how far north we went. Now we've actually come back a little bit and gone south. So that's south. So south, sine 20 equals south, the opposite side over the hypotenuse, which is 40. So how far south or down did I go? All right, let's see. Sine of 20 times 40 equals 13.7. 13.7 kilometers. So I have come back down 13.7 kilometers. All right, now, maybe at this point some of you are going, okay, I know what you're going to do. Or maybe not. Maybe you still have them. That's fine. But maybe some of you go, all right, now I get it, now I get it. Because what we've done is we have figured out what you, how you have driven to Joe's Diner. You could go this way, turn, and get there. Or you could do this. Travel 50 kilometers north, head this way 86.6, and another 37.6 kilometers, then go south 13.7, you will arrive at the same spot. So what I'm going to do now is take these four vectors, which I have now calculated, and go ahead and either add or subtract them. What do you mean add or subtract them? Look at these two. These are in the same direction. Remember from the first video, vectors pointing in the same direction, They're pointing this way. We add them together. Take those two west vectors and add them up. How far west did we end up traveling? 86.6 and 37.6, uh, 124.2. Add those together. We get 124.2 kilometers is how far we ended up going west to get to Joe's Diner. Then we headed north 50, but then turned around and came south 13.7. What did you do with vectors which are opposite each other? You subtracted them. Mm-hmm. So we take 50 and subtract 13.7, and that means we ended up not going, I mean, we ended up going up. See, we ended up from where we started going up north. We ended up going north, but we went north 50 minus 13.7, or uh, uh, 36.3 kilometers. So if I take that 50 and subtract 13.7, I get 36.3 kilometers. So we went north 
6.3 kilometers. We ended up going east 124.2. Now do you see it? Now do you see it? Mm, yes, you do. You see it. We ended up doing this. Was the same thing as this. Same thing. Same thing. I just did it in a different way to get there. That's the right triangle. I took my two, my two directions, broke them down into two right triangles, took the X and Y components, either out or subtracted them, or not X and Y, I called them more southeast and west, but same thing. If the west direction, both the same, add those together, the north and the south, they're opposite, so subtract them, and get an overall north of 36.6. And now I can go ahead and use right triangle math. I can figure that out using right triangle math. I didn't use the law of cosines. I didn't use the law of sines. I didn't have to use my sweet geometry skills to remember those alternate interiors and drawing in lines and figuring out angles in the middle. I didn't have to do any of that. And if that's not your forte, then don't do that. I would recommend this right triangle method. So what I would do now, now that I have this overall right triangle, is go ahead and use right triangle math, figure this side out, okay? Now remember, I kept that angle, I kept that answer up there from the last problem. We better, when we use Pythagorean theorem on this, to get that overall side, we should get that. But let's check it. 124.2 times 124.2. Okay. Uh, and then, I'm going to take 36. Point three, and then we're going to add 154.25.64, enter, and don't forget to take square root of that, square root, answer, enter. <gasps> Boom! Don't believe me, believe the calculator. We came out with 129.4. Oh, we are good. We, you and I, you, you, we're good. All right, so this comes out to be 129.4, just like it did in the other problem. Remember, you need to find the angle the two tails meet, and you ain't done yet. Here's the angle where the two tails meet, angle Pokemon ball. Find that. You can use sine, cosine, or tangent function to do that. We do have a right triangle and all three sides. Maybe you say, all right, okay. Um, from this angle's point of view, I have my adjacent side, and I have the opposite side. So maybe I'll do tangent. Tangent equals, well, I'll put Pokemon ball in there. Tangent of Pokemon ball is opposite, 124.2 over adjacent, 36.3. And remember, this is not gonna be the angle, it's a tangent of the angle. So 124.2 divided 36.3. Okay, 3.42, that's the tangent of the angle. I want to hit my second function, tangent button. Now I'm gonna put second function answer for the last answer I just got, and boom! 73.7 degrees. 73, this angle here is 73. Point, I forgot what it said. Seven degrees, 73.7 degrees. Same answer as that. No, it's not. That was 16.3 degrees north and west. Correct. Remember from the video a couple of times ago, there are two ways to state the same answer. And what we did is we figured out the angle here, where in the previous problem, we figured out the angle here. And that was 16.3 degrees north and west. This, 73.7 degrees west of north, which is the same answer. If you add that plus that, you get 90. They, they represent the same direction. So that is the same thing as that. Nailed it. So we did that using right triangle math only. Okay, we didn't use a lot of kinds, cosines, a lot of sines, and some of you will like that method. You can take um, any non-right triangle, break it down into two right triangles. Take the components, they're in the same direction, add them, they're opposite subtract them, make an overall right triangle, and solve for that. Um, when you have three vectors, these problems we've been doing only have two vectors. If you have a problem with three vectors, you, you don't have to, but man, is your life become complicated if you don't break down the three or four vectors 
into right triangles. So if you do have more than two vectors, I'm not even going to show you the method using the law of cosines and sines to get a solution using three vectors. You can do it, but a lot of geometry skill goes into that. It is easy to make a mistake. So if you have three or more vectors, absolutely break them down into right triangles and add x's and y's or subtract, depending if they're going in opposite directions, the same direction, and get an overall right triangle and solve for that. Okay, that is how we do non-right triangles mathematically. Booyah!